Good afternoon. Thank you for attending today's ISO 55000 Asset Management System webinar. I'm Tracy Smith. I'm the president of Swain Smith. Uh, we um, will be discussing today uh, asset management systems. Uh, these are management systems for an organization's physical assets. We're going to be talking about uh, the benefits of putting uh, an asset management system into the organization and what makes up an asset management system, what it looks like. And then at the end, we'll provide a summary uh, and a review of today's discussion. So a quick introduction on Swain Smith. We are a management consulting firm. We help organizations design, implement, and continually improve ISO 55000 compliant asset management systems. We've been at it since 1997, we target cost reduction while improving quality, safety, compliance, and uptime. Uh, we've helped some of the world's largest organizations with their asset management issues and opportunities. Please let us know if we can help you. So in today's webinar, we're going to talk about ISO 55000 first, and then we're going to uh, discuss um, some of the specifics regarding an ISO 55000 asset management system. So ISO 55000 is the international reference standard for the optimal management of physical assets. It was published in 2014 in response to industry demand for good practice standards. Um, it has quickly become the de facto worldwide standard for any organization seeking to demonstrate a high level of professionalism and how it manages its equipment. The central concept of ISO 55000 is the application of a management system to care for the organization's physical assets. And this is referred to as an asset management system. So the first um, industry misconception that we want to clear up is that a ISO 55000 asset management system is not software. Uh, it consists of the policies, the practices, processes, business rules, procedures that provide governance and direction to the asset management operation. Software and technology is an enabler of the management system. So the management system is a collection of things that work together to help the organization accomplish its objectives. It's not tied to any specific software. It doesn't care what EAM or CMMS uh, software system that is in place. It's focused on practices, fundamentals, uh, and it provides a, a documented foundation for the asset management operation. An asset management system ensures that Everyone knows who does what and how things are done so that tasks are performed the same way across the organization. So establishing consistent and disciplined practices as an output or a result from the implementation of a management system for your assets. Um, it uses policies and roles and responsibilities to standardize and coordinate activities uh, so business can deliver on its goals. So tying asset management activities to the um, accomplishment of organizational objectives, an asset management system is designed to do that. So an asset management system provides the consistent uh, deliberate practices that are needed to uh, manage physical assets effectively and efficiently. An asset management system um, provides a lot of benefits to an organization. Um, it helps to formalize asset management. Uh, it brings structure to the operation. It um, provides a documented process model for how you, how you take care of that equipment. Uh, it facilitates site standardization efforts, expedites alignment uh, to the standard or certification. Um, and it fully supports training efforts. Um, a documented approach to managing your assets um, provides something you can point to, something you can train to. So developing 
an asset management system is, is not labor intensive. Um, there are industry proven frameworks, there's standards, there's models available that can facilitate and expedite the development process. So what does an asset management system look like? Well, it starts with a framework, it starts with an outline, and it's followed by policy objectives and strategy. Um, uh, the policy sets the mandate, the objectives of what you're wanting to accomplish. The strategy establishes uh, the strategic plan for how you're gonna accomplish those objectives. And then you get into the tactical uh, side of the management system, which is the plans, how you're going to execute uh, your asset management activities, how are you going to roll your management system out. Um, key elements of a management system, roles and responsibilities. Everyone needs to know what they're responsible for. Uh, practices, processes, and procedures. You know, great data, great information comes from your process. So establishing great processes um, assists the um, being able to get great data and great information um, and therefore make um, educated and informed business decisions. Uh, a management system will establish informational elements. Uh, informational elements are fundamental elements like your master data, your equipment registry, codes, naming conventions, things that the software system, the enabler, would use to generate information. Um, performance improvement elements, another critical area of a management system. You, you need to identify your KPIs, your, um, your, your audit tools, um, from which you're gonna be able to say, if the management system performing, um, what are the results that we're getting? Is it helping me accomplish uh, our objectives? So right now we want to take a look at some examples of example documents from a asset management system. And we're going to start with an outline. So just like we've, we were said in the previous slide, uh, establishing an outline or a framework uh, for your asset management system is critical. That bring, kind of brings structure. It lets you organize your thoughts and ideas. And establishing that framework allows um, the uh, the build out to occur exactly know what you're going to address uh, with your management system another key document um, in the asset management system is your policy uh, this is you know a management system approach to managing your equipment it's a top-down approach and that at the top you start with a policy this is a leadership component this is where top management up, upper management sets the sets the directive and the mandate for how the organization's assets will be managed. Another key document inside of a, of a management system, asset management system, is roles and responsibilities. Establishing uh, the role, um, defining that role, tying responsibilities to that role, um, tying performance measures to that role, so that the, the individual that has been assigned to execute those responsibilities, they, they know exactly what they're, they're responsible for, what they're responsible to do. Um, and with it being documented, it's certainly going to provide a, an excellent training tool. Another uh, document that's, that's a key um, element of a uh, management system are your practices, your processes, your procedures. So, a good practice is going to identify what it is, why it's done, who's doing it, when does it occur, where does it occur, what are the business rules, what are the requirements around that practice. Uh, it's going to identify the process or the activities that are being executed and which role is executing them. And then finally, a good practice document or a good practice that you're putting in the organization is going to identify the procedure um, and get down into the sequencing of the activities. And once again, who's responsible for what? Just like we mentioned earlier, uh, information, um, information requirements, establishing um, coding structures, your naming conventions, your, um, your master data sets, those are fundamental building blocks of the um, EAM CMS system. So 
In this example here, these are just problem failure codes, action codes that be associated to equipment, which is tied to work orders, which would be generating an informational output that will allow you to improve the reliability of that piece of equipment. So establishing those coding structures and those fundamental data sets is critical. And then the other key piece of your management system would be your KPIs. Um, what are we measuring? Uh, what are we going to be monitoring? Uh, what are our targets? Uh, what do the outputs look like? What are the consequences of, of good results? What are the consequences of bad results? So establishing your KPIs, um, establishing the things that you're going to monitor and measure uh, are critical to improving performance. So what you were just seeing there were uh, sample documents from our Synergy model. Um, Synergy is our ISO 55000 uh, compliant asset management system. Our system helps clients develop their system. Uh, Synergy consists of industry accepted and proven uh, practices, processes, procedures, policies, coding conventions, taxonomies. Um, it's basically an ISO 55000 accelerator uh, for our client organizations. It's fully customizable, cloud-based, downloadable from the web, um, facilitates alignment or certification, and it canvases uh, the key asset management functions of maintenance, materials management, and procurement. So to summarize, uh, physical assets exist to help the organization accomplish its objectives. Uh, physical assets uh, to asset intensive organizations are, are critical to helping them um, accomplish their goals. So uh, outside of human assets, physical assets are, are a close second. So effective control of those assets by organization uh, is essential to making that happen. Uh, so an, an ISO 55000 asset management system um, provides the structure, the methodology, the control, the mechanism to help these organizations deliver on their objectives. For more information on ISO 55000 asset manage, management systems, please contact um, www.swainsmith.com. Um, you can also contact myself. There's my contact information. And thank you very much for attending today's webinar.